Hey guys, this is Hamza and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the incredible tax benefits of investing in real estate. Investing in real estate can be a great way to diversify your investment portfolio and gain some income. That being said, there are some tax advantages to be had and in today's video, I am going to discuss some of those. Although there are many tax benefits of investing in real estate, in today's video, I'm going to cover the four main tax incentives or tax advantages there are of investing in real estate. With that being said, let's jump right into the video. But before that, please consider subscribing to my channel if you guys are enjoying the content. The first tax advantage that I want to discuss in today's video is called depreciation. Now, as you all know, or you may know what depreciation is, depreciation basically means when you buy something new, it no longer holds that value when you sell it to the, to the secondary market. Exactly like, I guess, a car would be a good example. You buy a car brand new, you drive it off the lot, that car has already lost 10% or in some cases 20% of its value just the minute you drove it off the lot. And that is because now it has moved from new to used. Now the IRS uses this uh, methodology to calculate depreciation on real estate and real estate is depreciated on 27 and a half years. Now obviously you can't depreciate land because land always goes up in value but you can depreciate the existing improvement that is on the land. So let's say you have a building, a multifamily apartment community, your home, not the home that you live in but just a home, an investment property. Um, just because I think, I believe, the home you live in may come under different guidelines and there may be different advantages that you can take advantage of when investing in that. But we'll cover that later in the video today. So, depreciation is calculated over 27 and a half years and that depreciation basically will offset any gain that you may have um, as far as profit. So it's really good because you're not really losing any money. However, when you do your accounting, what ends up happening is you end up uh, showing a loss due to the depreciation which can then offset a little bit of your gains. Now in the past you couldn't offset too much of your gains because you were depreciating at 27 and a half years. Um, the government as of recent has implemented something called accelerated depreciation and the way you do that is basically called cost segregation. You need a cost segregation report that will accelerate depreciation of your asset and what that helps us do is that in well in theory that helps us accelerate the property uh, depreciation and <clears throat> we can take all of that loss and then offset a por a large portion of our gain through that accelerated depreciation so let's just say for example you bought a property and it was worth a million dollars and the improvement on that property was worth eight hundred thousand dollars now with the help of accelerated depreciation you can get all that negative all that deduction up front right by doing by implementing this cost segregation study um, and <clears throat> that way any gains that you may have in the future you could offset um, through that depreciation we have investors in our funds who are offsetting other gains that they may have in other places by using the deduction that they're getting by investing in real estate so that there is a carry and there is a way that people are doing that i am not a professional financial advisor nor am i a cpa so you will have to talk to your cpa and figure out how exactly to do that the second tax advantage you get right off the bat is called a deduction how simple is that you get to deduct your mortgage interest your insurance costs any repairs or maintenance that you may have had of course, you get to deduct your property management fees if you're hiring a third-party manager and your property taxes. Those are all deductions that you get when you invest in real estate. Make sure you talk to your CPA um, if you are already invested in real estate to make sure you are maximizing all those deductions. The third tax advantage that I want to discuss today is called the 1031 exchange. And this is actually a deferred tax incentive that the IRS has given us. Um, and that is basically to keep us reinvesting in real estate. Or the way I look at it is, the way I think about it is that they want us to keep investing in real estate. So when you start off, everybody who starts off investing small eventually grows and grows and grows and has a much larger portfolio than when they started and seem to not leave the real estate space because of this incentive. What a 1031 exchange basically does is if you sold a property, let's say you bought a property for a million dollars and you sold it for two million. Now you have a taxable gain for 
for just for theory's sake of a million dollars, right? What you can do to offset that gain entirely and not even get into the accounting is do something that is called a 1031 exchange. Once you do a 1031 exchange means that you are now going to buy a property with that two million dollars and because you bought the property uh, with that entire sum of money, um, you are no longer bound to pay taxes on that. Now, of course, there is a timeline and there is a process. You guys will have to Google what that process is. But 1031 exchanges are a great way to defer taxes um, and kind of offset them at the moment. You can use a combination of 1031 exchange plus cost segregation now um, to accelerate depreciation and off and defer it as well at the same time. So we're in interesting times right now and I think a lot of people who are considering investing in real estate should jump in uh, if they find the right opportunity at taking advantage of these two different tax advantages. The fourth and final tax advantage I want to talk about is called a live-in flip and this is a fairly simple process and basically what it does is if you are living in a home if it is your primary residence and you have a gain of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that gain is entirely uh, tax free so as an individual it's uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for your primary residence as a couple it is five hundred thousand dollars that you get to offset and actually believe it or not i personally know of a lot of people who buy homes and every two years will move out of them once they have seen a significant amount of gain because they are sheltered within that $500,000 uh, tax uh, limit. That's it for me guys. I hope you guys are enjoying all the real estate content that I'm putting out there. Um, remember to subscribe and like the channel and I will see you guys next video.